you had this interesting experience of being someone who was there during the last cycle through the, the down years, and now you're still here investing more than ever. Do you look back at that 2017 through you know 2019 run as like now and be able to look back at it as that's an experience that prepped you for this cycle we're now in? I mean, does it give you confidence at, at how things will progress? Like what, what can you take away from that? A lot of things. I guess the high level takeaway for me is that this time is different. Now, why do I say that? There's a lot of comparisons between now and, and 2018 when the 2017 bull market popped. Um, at, at, in the 2017 bull market, uh, I was fairly certain that we were in a bubble. It seemed very apparent to me that there were a lot of things here that didn't have sensible valuations and that most things in crypto were massively overinflated. Um, today is very different for a few reasons. One is that today, uh, you know, the, the things in crypto might have felt inflated, but they weren't inflated by 90%. They were inflated by maybe 2x, right? Which is like, oh, okay, that's about how much the market corrected, maybe a little bit more than 2x. Um, today, you know, the, the, most of the things that you see that are really valued highly in crypto, they work. They're real products. You can go and touch and feel them. They're not promises of eventually we'll build a thing that does a blah, blah, blah. Um, these are real things that people who are buying them understand what the product actually is that exists today. You know, the stories that we were telling ourselves in 2017 about, oh, there are going to be data marketplaces, there's going to be encrypted this and that, and there's going to, you know, the, the entire world is going to be using blockchains for supply chain tracking and all this stuff. You know, now the we, we understand much better what blockchains are going to be used for, right? We know about GameFi. We know about DeFi. We know about, you know, sort of what store of value purposes can be used for Bitcoin. Uh, so the, the picture just looks very different today in the sense that uh, people are not buying the stuff because of some, you know, broad misunderstanding of what blockchains can do. And that was really the case in 2017. Um, so the other thing, of course, is that the decline that we saw this year in the prices for crypto assets really was moving in lockstep with macro. And that's not what happened in 2017. When, when the 2017 bull market popped and we saw that huge drawdown in 2018, broader markets were completely fine. There was no broader macro contagion. There was nothing else going on in the market. It was just that people in crypto lost confidence. And once they lost confidence, the thing just spiraled until it basically hit uh, you know, absolute rock bottom lows. And everything in the space was down 90 plus percent. Now, there are some things that are down 90 percent from the peak. A lot of them are, you know, very, very risky altcoins or things that, you know, basically just fail to deliver. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's down, you know, 60, 70 percent. And it might sound like, OK, well, 60 and 90, like what's the big difference? They're both down a lot. But the difference between six, being down 60 percent and being down 90 percent is literally a difference of 4x. That is a massively bigger outcome to be down 60% than to be down 90%. And, you know, the really high quality stuff in the space, most of it is down 60 to 70%. So it, it lost, you know, half to two thirds of its value, but still they're, they're very, very valuable multi-billion dollar networks that are still being um, hodled by the people who believe in them. Yeah. So that to me feels very significantly different between now and, and 2017. You're listening to The Unstoppable Podcast, the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the Metaverse.